I'm going to demo a couple of Wii video features that might be useful for your digital storytelling project. Uh, two of the most common things you're going to need to do uh, once you've added some photos to your timeline are transition between different photos and add an animation effect that's often called Ken Burns. So I'm going to show you how to do those two things. So I'm logged into my Wii Video account at WeVideo.com. I've uploaded a bunch of photos and I want to add some to the timeline. That's really easy to do. I just click on it and then drag the photo onto one of the video channels. Um, we don't need to worry about video one versus main. I'm just going to drag this into the, the main video channel. And you can see that by default it's in there for five seconds, but I can click and drag to lengthen or shorten the clip. Um, I'm going to just leave it alone. That's fine. Uh, I'm going to now add a second photo. Here's a photo of a clock. And again, I can just drag that into where I want to go. Um, because I'm going to add a transition between these two, I'm going to add it uh, right next to the bridge after the second one. And now to add the transition, well, it, well, let's look at this first. As I hit play, you can see on the preview window up here that I've got a picture of the bridge, and then it abruptly transitions to the picture of the clock. Uh, if I want to make that less abrupt, I can add a transition effect. Uh, to do that, I'm going to click up here on transitions in this little um, middle menu and I have a whole bunch to choose from. I recommend more often than not using the crossfade. There's a bunch of really fancy ones, but I think they can be a little bit distracting. A crossfade is, uh, is just very, um, very simple, and I'm sure you'll recognize the effect once we add it. So I've just grabbed it and dragged it down, just like with the photo. And so here I'm gonna drag it in between the two things that I want it to transition. And you can see that now the transition itself is a one second item on my timeline and if I back the playhead up a little bit and hit play you'll see in the preview window I've got the bridge and then it fades into the clock. If I want more of that fade uh, it, that is if I want it to take longer to fade I can just stretch this out a little bit. So here I've stretched it out to two seconds. You see that that's shortened the clips around it. If I don't want it to have that effect I can um, still just drag drag each one of those um, wider to get them um, back to the length that they were before. And now if I press play and uh, let that go, you'll see that it's a slower two second fade into the image. So that's how to do a crossfade. Let's say now that we want to zoom in on one of the numbers in that uh, clock very slowly. So in order to do that, we're going to add a, uh, we're going to add an animation in the style again as I said of Ken Burns. So if I click edit selected clip here you'll see that I end up with this animation window and uh, you can toggle between start and end. So this is what the photo will look like at the beginning of the animation and this is what it will look like at the end. So if I want to zoom in on uh, let's say the the nine in the clock um, at the end here, I want to be further in, so I'm going to zoom like this, and I'm going to drag so that the 9 is sort of centered, right? Um, so um, let me click Done Editing now, and you can see this is going to be a very dramatic uh, zoom. You probably wouldn't want to do something this dramatic, but it'll give you a sense for what this effect does. So now let me press play. We'll get the bridge and then the fade. And you can see that as soon as the clock image is starting, we're getting a pretty quick zoom in um, for the course of that clip onto the number nine there. You want to be really careful with the Ken Burns. Uh, it can, can add some lovely movement to your video, but it can also be very um, overwhelming. Uh, the workshop from the Center for Digital Storytelling recommended that you not use Ken Burns on two consecutive images. So if you have a still image, then you can use Ken Burns if you want on the next one, but then put another still image in after that. If, you're, if all you're doing is panning and zooming, it just gets really, really intense. Um, and, and similarly, I would say um, you don't want probably to zoom in as fast as I have in this clip here. You probably want to um, do a, a slower sort of zoom. So we might press the uh, little edit button again and we might say, okay, you know what, that was, um, 
that was just too dramatic. So instead of zooming in all the way here at the end um, to 1.64 times the uh, original size, let's back that off to like 1.24. Let's try that. I'll recenter a little bit. Um, so let's try done and see what that looks like. That goes a little slower. I think that's um, I think that's nice. So if I really like this Ken Burns, I might even um, I, I might not want the the movement to overlap with that crossfade. So maybe in this case I don't do a crossfade at all, and I just remove with the little garbage can icon there the crossfade, and then press play. So we'll get an abrupt transition, but uh, the transition won't interfere with the beginning of the zoom from the Ken Burns. So again, these are all tools that you use um, together. Obviously, I've chosen zooming in on a nine sort of arbitrarily, but what you want to think about uh, in your video is what kind of effect am I trying to capture by adding um, one particular effect or the other. Okay, that's enough for now. Um, I hope this is helpful in your project.